He's the antagonist of the Netflix documentary Bad Vegan and despised for defrauding his investors, evading $400,000 in taxes, and even most repulsive, stiffing employees on their wages. He made a plea deal and avoided just punishment according to many. So where is Anthony Strangis in 2022? Let's catch up with the bad guy on Netflix's Bad Vegan. So where is Anthony Strangis now? To the dismay of hundreds, if not thousands, personally affected, and perhaps the millions of fans, Strangis was able to reach a plea deal which allowed him to only face payment of $840,000 in restitution and five years of probation. However, since he couldn't even pay his bail, he certainly couldn't pay those restitution debts. So he ended up paying for it by spending time behind bars for only a year. Nowadays, there's not much that can be gathered from his whereabouts or social engagements. But, according to authorities, he is still on probation in Massachusetts. Although several have reached out to get his take on the Netflix docuseries composed of his biography, he's refrained from any comment. The next main culprit in the bad vegan fraud is Sarma Mangalis. She's been much more vocal about the entire ordeal, and in her blog, she referred to it as disturbing, tragic, mind-bending, and excruciating. According to her account on Today.com, Melngalis swears that she's actually a victim, as she claimed, In 2015, I disappeared for nearly a year, which was also excruciating and surreal. One day I was arrested, which is what finally brought me back home, or to the city that is my home. It was only at this point I found out it was all gone, and in fact, I no longer had a home. I was charged with a bunch of crimes and eventually unable to withstand a lengthy and costly trial. I stood and pled guilty to those crimes and then spent four months, the summer of 2017, at NYC's Rikers Island Jail. It wasn't until 2017 that she filed for divorce and maintained her accusations that she was actually manipulated and abused by strangers. But is she speaking truthfully or full of tall tales? In some cases, she does seem to be honest, remorseful, and willing to make amends by recompensating those she victimized. She's done this with the funds that she made from the Netflix documentary. After the Netflix documentary Bad Vegan came out, Mangalis was open about receiving payment to appear in the series. Regarding the payment she received from her appearance on the documentary, she wrote in her blog, It's standard practice to say nothing of journalistic integrity, that subjects do not get paid for participation in documentaries, at least not the reputable ones. In my case, however, at my insistence, the producers made an exception so that I could pay the total amount my former employees were owed, amounts that occurred after my disappearance in 2015. Of all the harm and the many debts resulting from my downfall, this portion weighed heaviest. What is the truth? Is it what we've seen from the Netflix docuseries Bad Vegan, Fame Fraud Fugitives? The entire story does provoke odd events, as the summary lies right inside the title. And that makes it even more confusing to get a grasp of the truth. The miniseries, which has been said to be longer than necessary, is still a fascinating tale of investigative discovery. Although Sarma Mengelis had her say in the documentary, she's also said that it isn't exactly accurate. Fans and critics alike have noticed that whenever Sarna Mangalis is asked a question that clearly can't be answered in her favor, she seems to have a lot of holes in her memory. However, proper praise has been given to the filmmaker and producers for clearly showing through the intense interviews that they truly did attempt to get the truth from her. And in that pursuit, they do present points of skepticism whenever obvious. The producers clearly drove her to a point of legal hostile interrogation to get a reaction out of her and squeeze out the truth. The plot takes place as Sarma Mangalis rises to fame as the owner of pure food and wine in New York City, her vegan restaurant being the spearhead of her success. Everyone famous was seen there and this place offered vegan food at a time when it really wasn't common in restaurants. She produced an original concept with class and lots of flavor. As for her fraud, she attempts to set the record straight. Aside from the irrelevant yet ironic and hilarious reports that the leading vegan restaurateur actually became a bad vegan as she was caught picking out on Domino's pizzas and a pallet of buffalo wings, Sarma Melngalis honestly tries to prove her innocence by telling her story. She was quoted saying, I also agreed to do this documentary because I hope people can learn something valuable from my story. 
As anyone who's been through anything shitty knows, having your experience help others lessens the shittiness. I only finally saw Bad Vegan 12 days ago. The story is so weird and complicated, even to me, that it seemed inevitable that the documentary would get some things wrong. And I worried about this. I did not participate in how the story was told beyond my interviews and the source materials I contributed. I also worried about how my family would feel about it. The ending of Bad Vegan is disturbingly misleading. I am not in touch with Anthony Stranges. I didn't want to marry him, and that part of the story was inaccurately condensed. Here's a breakdown of each of the four episodes. Episode 1 begins with the attractive and enigmatic stranger who slips into Sarma's life by offering to pay her debts. This is just the cream at the top as he fully seduces the world-renowned vegan chef and almost literally has her wrapped around his finger. Now for the skepticism. Is Anthony Strange just really that good of a Casanova? By episode two, it is revealed that Anthony Strange just might be kin to Doctor Strange because he's able to put a love spell on Sarma and pretty much hypnotize her into believing that she might actually be gifted with magical talents. Under his spell, Sarma ultimately gives him $1.7 million in a span of two years. By episode three, Sarma's world turns topsy-turvy as all her horrible mistakes and foolishness comes back to torment her. Her lover, Anthony, is put in charge of the restaurant, but they're focused more on traveling and dealing with the workers going on strike. The last episode depicts Sarma and Anthony fleeing Las Vegas and seeking refuge in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. At this location, the couple must come to terms and face the consequences of their disastrous mistakes. Truth be told, Netflix has two docuseries, Bad Vegan and The Tinder Swindler with the same theme. When you watch it, you can't help but wonder why the women didn't stop giving money to these alleged con artist Casanovas. It would seem very simple. Just stop giving money to the hustler who keeps coming back for more. It does actually make you wonder, were these girls just trying to get in deep with the hashtag MeToo movement? The former restaurateur behind the celebrity hotspot Pure Food and Wine in Manhattan turned fugitive after stealing about $2 million from investors and colleagues. How could she have a leg to stand on? From there, she went on the run with her employee-turned-husband, Strangest. So in her letter to the public on her website, when she vowed that she had already compensated those she wronged, are you inclined to believe her? Well, she did actually swear by saying, in exchange for the source materials and images I contributed to the documentary, the producers paid an attorney on my behalf, who then, on the same day, which happened to be the day New York City restaurants were first shut down due to the pandemic in 2020, wired full payment directly to the attorney representing the employees. Sarma Mangalis, the one now nicknamed the vegan Bernie Madoff, then added, of all the harm and the many debts resulting from my downfall, this portion weighed heaviest. But according to reports, Anthony Stranges was definitely a terrific charmer. Shane Fox, mostly known as Stranges, was allegedly pen pals with Alec Baldwin on Twitter. Baldwin met his wife Hilaria at Pure, and Melngalis wrote on a 2010 blog post that she was in love with the actor, but did not want a relationship. However, she was completely enthralled by Anthony Stranges. Melngalis admitted that Strangis, who was hired as a manager at Pure in 2013, had such a hold on her that she believed that he could make her beloved dog Leon immortal if she passed her tests and joined his secret society. The tests usually required her to wire him whatever amount of money he requested, even if it meant that she'd be unable to pay her bills, her investors, and even her restaurant staff. So was she on drugs or just that foolish with love? Leave your opinion in the comment section below.